morning everyone and uh, welcome to our conference. Uh, for those of you who've uh, been at our conference before, um, you know that this is one of the premier conferences uh, in the country surrounding um, uh, views on markets, um, certainly companies across all sectors and all types of companies, whether they're small cap, mid cap or large cap companies. Uh, we have a, a very interesting three days for you. Uh, we've got more than 220 corporates that are attending our conference, uh, over 600 investors, both domestic and foreign, and uh, more than 8,000 meetings that have already been organized. So uh, by a wide margin, one of the largest conferences um, in, in India. Uh, uh, from the securities business. Um, I think what you will find is we've also got an interesting set of speakers and CEOs, um, almost uh, 16, 17 of them who will be talking to you all uh, through the course of uh, the next three days. And I would encourage you all to attend, um, attend their sessions because they bring a unique perspective. We've tried to put together people from different um, different backgrounds and different sectors in order to give you an overall idea about how they see uh, the world around them, particularly in India, but also how they view the global environment and the impact on India and the Indian economy. So uh, once again, I want to welcome you all to the conference. Uh, I'll just make some opening remarks in terms of uh, how I see the environment and based on what I'm hearing and seeing around me. I think it's, uh, it's fair to say that uh, it's now been about 18 months since the new government's come into, uh, into power. And uh, in a variety of ways, I think, um, on balance, uh, people uh, expected a lot more than what, uh, what they've seen so far from the government. Uh, that has largely to do with, uh, A, expectations being uh, unrealistic to, to begin with. Uh, B, there has been some, um, there have been some challenges in terms of execution. Uh, some of it has to do with uh, politics, some of it has to do, has to do with um, um, bureaucracy, some of it has to do with uh, decision making. So it's, it's a mix of different things. I think uh, suffice to say that uh, the government is obviously um, aware of the issues. Uh, the government is taking steps to course correct and make sure that um, decision making and reforms uh, pick up uh, and are stepped up over the course of the next uh, two, three years. Uh, you've already seen um, some uh, announcements surrounding that uh, post the Bihar elections, which I think were very important announcements for the sectors that, it, that uh, those announcements impacted, particularly the real estate sector and other sectors where uh, foreign investments have been uh, streamlined in a way that uh, would make it easier for people to invest in those sectors. Uh, I do believe that over the next um, six months, uh, there would be a pickup in construction activity based on everything that I'm hearing from government in the road sector, in railways, and, and also in defense. So I think uh, I'm cautiously optimistic that uh, over the course of the next uh, six to nine months, you will see a pickup in um, in uh, government spending and government investments, which should feed into a pickup in construction activity. Uh, there have also been uh, some other reforms that are uh, important from a structural perspective that the government's focused on and has already announced. Uh, one of them is obviously the DISCOM reform, which is exceedingly important given that the power sector is very important for the country for, from a variety of perspectives, including um, stepping up uh, manufacturing in the country, but also given the, the stressed assets that banks have to the power sector. So the DISCOM reform is an important initiative. Uh, we'll have to uh, wait and see how it unfolds and um, whether the DISCOMs um, really get more disciplined in terms of how they execute on this. Um, obviously, it, it will force the states to be a, a lot more disciplined in terms of how they dish out freebies to their vote banks and absorb it in their budgets and find the resources to fund whatever it is that they want to do for their constituencies. My hope is that this doesn't balloon into, you know, larger state deficits that feed into overall national deficits, which again would crowd out uh, private sector investments because the borrowings of state governments could pick up quite substantially if uh, the state were to issue bonds in order to fund some of these losses. My hope is that, um, that they would not uh, go down that path 
because at the end of the day there are some checks and balances in terms of uh, fiscal responsibility that they would have to adhere to and so my hope is that uh, while this is voluntary it, it cannot be enforced by the center on the states that the states would take up these reforms and would take up the framework that um, that the power ministry has announced for discom reforms the other important piece of legislation which i hope will go through the winter session is the bankruptcy code which again has been formalized and uh, the government said that they would try and get it done uh, in the winter session of parliament that again is is an exceedingly important piece of legislation for a variety of reasons including the development of bond markets in the country uh, the only word of caution there is uh, you know we we've never been short of legislation and regulation uh, what we've been um, uh, what we've not done a good job at is actually the implementation and execution on whatever legislation we've already passed uh, we already have uh, a surface which has not been as effective as people thought it would be my hope is that this bankruptcy code that is being developed would result in uh, more clarity for bondholders and for uh, and for uh, creditors to be able to execute on uh, you know doing what it takes to resolve debt in a timely way and that i think is exceedingly important because what we find today is that even though growth might pick up unless the asset quality issues and the capital issues of the banking system are resolved it's not going to be that easy to find money to fund growth uh, we already find that uh, businesses are stretched because of excess leverage and therefore risk capital is uh, is in short supply for any kind of new investments in the economy so not only is risk capital in short supply but debt capital is also in short supply because of asset quality issues of banks and the capital issues that the banks face so if you don't have adequate risk capital or debt capital it's very hard to figure out how you're going to fund growth which is why uh, as i've said before for the next couple of years it's going to be important for the government to really step up uh, public spending and public investments because it's going to take some time for the private sector to come back and start uh, investing in the economy in a big way so i think uh, there is a lot in the works uh, i am cautiously optimistic that um, uh, we will see a pick up in construction activity and in government spending and investments over the next uh, 6 to 9 months uh, i do hope that some of the reforms that the government has in the works will go through parliament to the extent it requires um, endorsement from parliament and that we will focus actually on uh executing on whatever bills and legislations we pass in order to make sure that those are actually effective on the interest rate environment uh, again our own house view is that uh, over the next um, 6 to 12 months uh, there is a possibility of a maximum of 25 to 50 basis points uh, reduction in rates uh, that that obviously uh, is tied into what actually happens uh, globally including what the fed does uh in december and beyond but also the uh, uh the the uh, level of inflation and uh, whether that stabilizes and uh, keeps coming off i think given the mindset of the reserve bank i think uh, they would probably be a lot more comfortable with um, lower inflation levels and moderate growth rather than uh, cutting rate sharply and again running the risk of um, the demand side heating up and inflation picking up so from that perspective we don't expect uh, very aggressive rate cuts from the reserve bank um, it's a, it's it's fair to say that um, uh, if we create the right environment for investments in the economy based on the current uh, interest rate levels and if there is a f- is a further reduction to some extent that should be sufficient to get uh, people to start investing i don't think the issue is really about the absolute level of interest rates it has more to do with making sure that the execution risk in the economy comes off dramatically and people feel confident to begin investing in new sectors obviously the capacity uh, excess capacity that exists in the current economy has to be taken up and therefore the demand side has to pick up whether it's domestic or international but i do believe that india fortunately has enough of a domestic growth story that despite the international environment remaining weak we should be able to um, get a lot more asset creation and capital formation in the country and that is really not dependent on the international environment it has more to do with what we do in terms of policy and and how we facilitate execution on the ground so if that were to be made a lot easier i'm sure 
uh, risk appetite would come back and uh, many of the industries which are tied to asset creation and capital formation whether it's uh, the core industries or whether it's steel cement mining and other areas would start picking up the construction industry would pick up um, if real estate picks up that has a, a whole host of uh, associated benefits across the economy so i believe there is still enough that we can do uh, from a domestic context uh, despite the international environment remaining weak and my hope is that uh, we will see more of that over the next six to nine months. And uh, the remaining course of uh, this government's term, which is another three and a half years, uh, that the government will course correct uh, quite significantly in order to make sure that uh, development and growth picks up in the economy. So those are really my opening remarks. I once again welcome everyone to the conference. Hope you'll have a productive three days uh, in interacting with all the companies that are attending the conference and in listening to uh, the various speakers that, um, that uh, would be um, uh, speaking to you all over the next uh, two or three days. Thank you very much for attending.